This video is proudly brought to you by Surfshark. We'll hear more from them later on, so stay tuned. Crash Team Racing Undeniably one of the greatest kart racing games ever created, even trumping a few of Mario's outings over the years. While at his foundation a platforming mascot, Crash and friends were never shy to hit the track for some fast-paced race action across a series of titles. So, because I've already ranked every single Crash platforming stage, today we'll be ranking every racetrack from worst to best. But first up, I've got to cover some guidelines. Our focus today is on the pure kart racing games, including the main trilogy you all remember, along with the nitro fueled remake from 2019, which was a love letter to the franchise. But we'll also be discussing some lesser known titles, some of which are no longer available to play, but don't worry, I still have these on an old iPad, so thankfully we'll be able to include them here. I'll be looking primarily at the layouts and themes, if they're fun to play with a good atmosphere, how faithful they are to the source material and the theme music since there are some absolute bangers in these games. As for any racing stages featured in Crash's other games, they will not be included here because we're looking at the pure racing titles. But if you're curious, most of them were mediocre at best. Overworld locations and battle arenas will also be excluded from this list, and finally, we will only be looking at unique levels from the series, so any courses that appeared more than once will be grouped into a single spot in the ranking unless they feature drastic changes. That means that some of Nitro Kart's levels that were remade will get two separate positions, while others will only qualify for one. Alright, now that we've broken down all of those guidelines, that leaves us with a total of 84 levels that we'll be ranking today. So strap yourselves in for a turbocharged extravaganza because it's finally time to answer the question, what is the absolute worst Crash Team Racing level? The King Pooper Award goes to number 84. Rings of Uranus from Tag Team Racing. That fart sound effect has never been more appropriate. The only course in the entire series that allows you to play nine laps is an astonishing nine laps too many if you ask me. Rings of Uranus is so null, so void of anything, that I feel like I'm actually losing brain cells the longer I have to try and talk about it. It's just a circle. Now, that's not to say that simple courses can't work, and we'll see exactly how they achieve greatness later on, but spoiler alert, they actually attempted this funny little thing called level design. Maybe you've heard of it. What a total waste, when even the gunplay in Tag Team can't bring this trash up to even a mediocre level, you know this one is worthy of the bottom spot in this ranking. Next up, just barely missing out on that bottom spot, is Crash Nitro Kart's mobile phone port. Now, given that this game is so primitive in its design, and our focus is on unique courses, we'll be grouping the three levels here into a single spot on the list. Not even trusting the player to accelerate on their own, all you can really do in this game is awkwardly steer yourself through courses known so creatively as Beach, City, and Castle. While they slightly increase in difficulty over time by introducing more hazards and no boundaries that lead you to fall off the course, overall this is an incredibly weak entry into Crash's racing legacy that's just better off forgotten over time. In similar vein, Crash Racing, as it's known, which is Tag Team Racing's mobile port, suffers from the exact same limitations, forcing it into an incredibly low position. Again, the three different themes do very little to feel unique, so this entire game is again taking up a single spot. I do like that they attempted to introduce the tagging mechanic into this, but it really leaves much to be desired. 
However, that's not to say that all of Crash's mobile racing games were pointless, as Nitro Kart 2 actually featured much more defined levels. Now sure, at first glance, Bamboo Forest here definitely resembles those weaker titles we just eliminated, but this game does attempt some 3D perspective with some basic yet charming vertical structures, as you can see here with the bridges and tunnels. And you know what? It's actually not the worst thing to play. That said, it obviously can't keep pace with many of the true 3D courses of the console titles, and the culturally insensitive hats all the characters wear just seems a bit overboard if you ask me. But what can I say about this game? I know it's entering the race in the bottom 10 levels, but I am genuinely excited to show you more of what it has to offer coming up. Trust me, it gets better than this, I promise. The iOS alternative to this game is one that I'd say a few more people may recognise. The first iOS entry for the series, known as Nitro Kart 3D, entirely featured tracks from Tag Team Racing, so for that reason, there's no need for us to discuss it here. Thank God, because it's atrocious. Thankfully, the follow-up title, CNK2, was a much better presented and improved game with many original courses, and while there are certainly some winners hidden away here, the the biggest stinker by far is Anarchy in Antarctica. This frozen wasteland is barren of any enjoyment, sucking the life out of you as you navigate the bland landscape. There is just nothing to say, you can see it with your own eyes how abysmal this is. Aside from the caves and a few ice sheets over the frosted lakes, this level offers nothing. This is the purest definition of generic. Vanilla. Even the music is just so deafeningly bland to the palette, and the entire experience feels like it's never gonna end. So please, let's move on. Number 79 is another stinker, unfortunately. Stinky Sewers. I have one word that sums up this entire level. Grey. Yeah, they really ran with that colour scheme on this, didn't they? But not only that, the layout is also what I'd describe as grey. It's gross and boring, particularly the large pits of murky water that split the track and make traversing this course a major headache. Then combining that with a mix of right angle corners really tests this game's poor handling. And the music offers bugger all. Stinky? No, these are shitty sewers. Next level, Lunatic Laboratory. Now where in the hell did they steal these assets from? This place is so generic, it could exist in literally any other game and still fail to offer any appeal. Also, this is hardly a laboratory. I mean, there is some science jargon tucked away in the back, but the rest of this is more like a medieval castle. Cortex Castle-esque. Oh boy, that's the nicest thing I could ever say about this. I don't mind the hedged courtyard area though. It kind of reminds me of Nitro Court from the original CTR's battle mode. But yeah, if it wasn't for the technological beats in the soundtrack met with a chorus of robotic burps, then you'd never know the true intentions of this place. The only thing true to say about this one is that it sucks. Downgrading back to the earlier mobile version of this game, we've got Oxide's World, where we race the mean green speed machine through galactic canyons and across dry plains on this stunning planet. This is actually gorgeous. I can't believe it, and the music is a decent bop too while it lasts. Seeing the rudimentary 3D structures honestly just makes me wish we could have seen this one fully realised. It's still such a basic map to play, but this one had potential. It's a real shame that it was squandered in this primitive title. <laughs> Dead Heat from Tag Team Racing is up next. Dead on Arrival is what they should have called it. Like many of the previous courses in the bottom 10, the sheer volume of tasteless, uninspired design flowing through so many of these continues with this desolate, Egypt-inspired course. 
Layout-wise, it's okay, I suppose, but nothing happens here. There are no course hazards, and the shortcut, like many will see in this game, leave a lot to be desired, and it always feels like such an effort to get through a measly three laps on this bastard. I actually hate it. I'd rather see a bad course that at least attempted to be something more and failed over a level so lethally safe and basic that it actually causes damage to my brain. And the best of the worst, coming in at the top of our bottom 10, is Turbo Track from the original CTR. Now, I feel like this one can be an easy target for a lot of people, but is it justified? I think it may be. I really didn't want to include this one in the bottom 10, but it really brings zilch to the table. This bootleg knockoff of Slide Coliseum isn't the worst idea on paper as a place to hone your boosting skills, but man, hitting that giant S-bend at the end of the track is just a huge obstruction for any fun you could possibly have. I don't even think it's a case of whether you're an amateur or a pro player, I've never heard any love for this one throughout the community, and I totally understand why. So it makes even less sense why one of the most unloved disasters of the franchise has appeared the most out of any other course. What the hell is that about? Including the original game and Nitro Fueled Remake, as well as the Retro Stadium reskin, that's three appearances. Why? Please tell me why anyone thought that was a good idea. Why waste a retro reskin on the most hated level? Now, I don't believe this could ever be considered the absolute worst stage, but my god, it really doesn't live up to the expectations we have of CTR. Well, that's our bottom 10 levels, ladies and gentlemen. And I'm afraid to say that we're not even close to getting to the good stuff yet, because there is such a substantial amount of ultra-generic levels still to see. <sighs> this is an endurance race, without a doubt, so make sure you buckle up. It's important to be safe when you're behind the wheel, but it's also important to be safe while browsing online. Oh yeah, <laughs> Square Eye Jack has been promoted to Big Boy YouTube. Surfshark is a VPN service that keeps you safe online by hiding your personal data from whatever pesky bad guys are out there in the galaxy. Synchronized across all of your devices with a single subscription, you can rest assured that your information is secure. But VPNs aren't just about security. With the ability to switch your location with just one click, you can bypass regional restrictions and access online content from other countries all around the world, which is honestly incredible. It's like a super cheat code for streaming content blocked in your country. If you're from the land down under like I am, then you're well aware how restrictive trying to watch the latest shows has become in recent years. So if you'd like to support the content I make and get a good deal on a VPN, Surfshark is offering my audience an incredible 83% discount on a year-long subscription, along with an additional three months of service absolutely free. Just use the promo code SQUARE when signing up, or click the link in the description box below this video. Video and tell those pesky data thieves to go f far away, back to their home planet. You bastards, leave my data alone! I'm protected! You can't get me! Ugh. Thank God, I feel safe now that I've got Surfshark. <laughs> okay, don't you go anywhere though, because we've still got plenty of levels to rank. In at number 74 is Deep Sea Driving. The tag team racing Deep Sea Driving, that is. This is the only level where you can get spooted out of a whale's blowhole, and that's probably the only highlight to be found on this one. Underwater interiors are always fun and stunning to look at. Keep your eyes peeled for ruse tubes and the real deep sea driving later on in the rankings. But with tag teams purposefully designed fakeness to the way themes have been constructed, I just can't get behind how manufactured this all feels. 
I get that it's a video game and that I really shouldn't care that much, but this shit is important to me, okay? And I think it should be important to many of us who enjoy games. The pirate ship shortcut is sometimes more of a hindrance than a help, and aside from that, it's just a road through an ugly aquarium, and when there is much better examples of how to do this, it honestly doesn't deserve such a detailed rundown. But to help illustrate my point, next up is Atlantis, and even though it's from a weaker game technically, this feels so much nicer to play just because it makes you feel like you're underwater. And honestly, I'm not just saying that, this feels like Atlantis with the city off in the distance, submerged structures and awesome bridges across deep ocean chasms. All of the characters have those little fishbowl helmets on too. Who knew not drowning could be so cute? Had we seen something more akin to this type of underwater stage in a new game, I reckon it'd offer Crash 4 vibes, which would be great to see. The ocean floor is a wonderland of opportunity when it comes to level design in my opinion, though it is a shame that levels of this nature never tend to rank well. Another from this game with great potential for remaster is Arachnaland, a horror-filled cavern of spiderwebs and giant creepy crawlers. It's a bit too grey for my liking, maybe a hint of torchlight or something like that could have elevated this one more, but even on this limited platform, the detail of water droplets dripping from the ceiling is an incredible touch, and it actually tried to include some set pieces, most notably the bridges. Almost all of the levels in this game game feature them, but within the cave system, they're a nice fit. I like this one. It's still nothing all that special, but we're starting to see some potential here, and that makes me excited. Time for an injection of fossil fuel. This one is more of a generic jungle course that fits better with Crash's core themes, but while generally I'm not a fan of Tag Team's presentation, I can't say no to the big goofy dinos placed around the map. Even getting swallowed is a neat set piece, but the second half of this map, nothing happens. It's just a bunch of corners that can be quite awkward with the controls in this game, but may have been received a little better if featured in CTR or Nitro Kart. I can see what they were going for, and I don't mind parts of the soundtrack either, but again, like many of Tag Team's courses, there are much better executed versions yet to come. At number 70, we've got Hellenic Hijinks from CNK2. And... Um... This one is just so out of place. It features a few Roman temples and colosseums blended in with some nice countryside, but why on earth is this in a Crash game? Were the developers even familiar with the source material? I mean, the only thing even remotely close to this was Tiny Tiger's boss fight in Warped, but that's a pretty big stretch if you ask me. I wouldn't give the developers of this game that level of credit, because the reality is, it was most likely just some random assets from other projects that they had at their disposal, so they slapped it together into this course. It's not exactly bad though, but it's not good either. And yeah, this is just a really bizarre entry. I really don't know what to make of this one, so it's probably just best to stay buried in my opinion. Next up is the coveted 69 spot, but much to my dismay, Craters on Uranus is anything but nice. Listen, I'm a fan of butts, okay? I'm not going to lie to you people. But this game's barbaric reliance on that childish joke grows to be a real pain in Uranus very quickly. For the final level of the game, long and drawn out does not automatically result in an epic finale. I don't mind the starting area with the large spiral turns and elevated section over the starting gate, but the pace shattering warp gates and abundance of sharp turns ruin it. It's just not fun to play and outstays its welcome very quickly. Then you play it on the iOS version and my god, it makes me want to throw up. Holy fuck is this sickening. I wish we could just move on, but we've got more tag team coming up with Uranus's mine. Okay, this one is literally exploring an asshole. Now, I get the name is supposed to be a play on words, like, oh, your ass is mine, you little bandicoot bitch, but no. There is a mine shaft in Uranus. That's the joke, 
Why aren't you laughing? It's funny! Get it? But the actual design is only one step above literally being a dirty bumhole. More grey, nothing to really see or look at. The music is an improvement over some recent entries if you ask me, but it's still a poopy mess. To double down on my previous point, making something long and drawn out does not automatically make it epic, you fucking fools. <laughs> Pirates of the Carburetor is a simple course. The pirate theme drastically helps it, featuring various ships under siege by giant ocean creatures and caves filled with treasure. It's one that would have fared much better in a more traditional kart racer setting in my opinion, but it's still okay. Not really much to include on this one. It's far from great, but I'm mostly just thankful we're moving away from the drizzling shits. Tire and Ice is much the same. Simple, done well, but ultimately, it just doesn't leave much impact on your brain. I enjoy the icy caves and the large jump over a pool of lava. The scenery actually fits quite well with this one for a change, and even the music, I'm sure is up for debate, but I personally think it works fine. It would be much better with CTR's power sliding and weapon mechanics, but it gets the job done as your stock standard track. More tag team racing? My god, that's five levels in a row now. Tiki Turbo is our introduction to the game, and for an opening course, it doesn't do much beyond getting that job done at an average level. Starting with a big jump and with a shortcut that's actually an integral key to success on this map, the jungle theme is reliable and the music is good, but there is nothing more I can possibly add. That's the problem with Tag Team. The racing and gunplay force the joy out of course design, resulting in a tremendous amount of uninspired locations that barely got a passing grade. We're only a quarter of the way through this ranking, and yet we've already knocked out more than half of this entire game. Man, that really just says it all. Now, with a somewhat original theme, is Sandcastles, which has the crew racing through giant sandcastles. Who would have guessed? I actually like this idea. Beach levels and bandicoots go together like crashing crystals, so the vibrant colours, bouncy music and water hazards all make this a fun one to race through. Your carts can actually grow wings in this game for some larger flying sections over the water too, which is a neat feature. Sure, there may be better and much more iconic beach levels to come, but let it be known, this fits in the mix a lot better than more than half of what Tag Team had to offer. Let that sink in for a moment. This basic shit got Tag Team's ass whooped. Moving on to the more advanced version, Bandicoot Beach starts off the adventure. Clearly a nod to Crash Cove, but hey, it's still pretty good if I'm being honest. I'm a sucker for rocky archways in coastal locations, but the piers and caves offer some variety to the landscape, both artistically and by introducing a mix of bumpy roads and right angle turns. And I was shocked to learn that you can actually leave the main course in favour of the sandy beach and pirate ship jumps. That's pretty damn cool if you ask me, and quite unexpected of a game with such a muted reception. Back in the original Nitro Kart, we begin our adventure on Inferno Island, yet another Crash Cove clone, even more blatantly this time if you ask me, but still another basic, yet solid opening course. This one honestly doesn't do much for me, but the Nitro Fueled remake really improved by introducing a nighttime palette, taking inspiration from Terra's hub world in the original game. It's a gorgeous blend, and at least makes more of an effort to set this track apart from the rest. I just wish it had a little something extra to catch our attention. I want to see things spiced up. Impress me. But yet another boring circle is Coco Park, and I fully expect to see some backlash for placing this one so low, but please, just hear me out. I am a big fan of the comfy, vibrant visuals, and the soundtrack is an absolute bop, so cheerful and optimistic. I am a big fan of the tunnel as well, but I've always found the rest is just underwhelming. 
The entire course is so wide, things feel too spread out, kind of like turbo track in a way. I'm aware that not every course needs to be this huge, expansive mission to get through, but this one could have introduced a little more now that we're in the second hub world of the game. That shortcut up through the foliage is also stupid and takes away more than it adds in my opinion. I fully expect to be alone on this one though, and that's okay. I like to discuss these things. It's what makes every level ranked so fun for me, so do let me know your thoughts down below. Koala Carnival does exactly what I'm looking for, still offering such a basic circle, but it has a lot more going on with immense variety to the obstacles you can navigate. Visually it's a bit of an eyesore and the music is pure, unfiltered insanity, but the big jumps and awesome power slide sections really increase the pace. This was the weakest of all the Grand Prix events over the lifespan of Nitro Fueled. I think we all would have much preferred a dedicated and faithful tag team racing course to bring those characters into the mix, but this one is still okay and I'm honestly happy to just see something original beyond the oversaturated beaches and castles that other sequels relied so heavily on. Spin-off games like this allow for expression and freedom. They should be fun and experimental, not just using the mainline series as a crutch all the time, and I feel like Koala Carnival is a great example of that, exploring some new horizons for further expansion on this universe. In at 59 are the Nitroactive Sewers, which are mostly an interior level, which is quite ambitious for this game. The music is hard hitting and bangs while mechanical doors slam shut, as you have to avoid pits of mines and acidic puddles. This was one I was honestly hoping to see reimagined when Nitro Fueled came along. Something like this, in combination with Acid Rain, a removed level from the original platforming game, could have been absolutely breathtaking. A course like this with such contrasting, moody visuals would have been awesome to race through. These proof of concept levels make me a little sad, as that's all they ever will be, but they're honestly some of the most fun to dissect. Another from this game is Up in the Woods, which features a large boardwalk along the tree line with huts and bridge sections dabbled about. This is another that I really enjoy. It gives me treetops from Spyro vibes, which honestly would have been another perfect foundation for a nitro fueled course. The only thing keeping this one scoring higher is that the music does not fit at all. It needed some nice, breezy, whimsical music instead of this Daytona sounding shit. But I'm sad to say that the race for this game has come to an end. The final level we've got to look at from the original mobile version of Nitro Kart 2 is Long Canyon. Immediately, you'll recognise the Looney Tunes style visuals which are very fitting for Crash and the 3D architecture used to create rock formations and developed cliff sides and caves are just perfect for this one. It's very akin to Dingo Canyon, even going beyond it in some areas by featuring boulders falling onto the track and a bit more varied landscape. But overall, for the most basic game in this ranking to feature a variety of unique courses, this title stands out as a hidden gem in the franchise that I only wish could have seen more time in the spotlight. An incredible effort. It seems only fitting to follow up that elimination with Dingo Canyon, as they're almost identical in terms of theme and quality. This one is mixed up expertly, with the downhill segment into a flooded riverbed, and then back out into this forked road through the cliffs. Personally, I prefer the outside lane along the edge of this chasm because it's a lot more perilous, and the large jump before completing your lap is a nice touch. But after seeing Long Canyon, it is potentially missing a few things too, such as the rocks falling down onto the track for example. That would have made for a perfect addition here, but I guess those pesky armadillos are painful enough as it is. When I was a kid, this was actually one of my favourites, and even though I've still got quite the soft spot for its harsh, rocky roads, I couldn't find any reason to place this one higher up. Switching over to something a bit different now, Nitro Kart's Game Boy Advance port. 
Now, like I mentioned at the start, since we're only looking at unique levels, any ported tracks would simply be grouped in with their primary versions just to make things easier to digest. But without Hyperspaceway, the GBA version includes its own original level known as Velo's Challenge. This one actually combines a course from the four different hub worlds into one single conglomerate for the final boss battle. Taking from, I believe, Inferno Island, Barren Ruins, Out of Time, and Electron Avenue, we hop through portals into each area, which is a really interesting concept. I wish we'd seen this in an actual 3D format, as opposed to this downgraded, weaker port of the game. But conceptually at least, Vicarious Visions were bang on the mark with this. It's much of the same at the end of the day, but still very deserving of being featured above all of the shit source in the lower rankings. Slide Coliseum is less of a video game kart racer and more of a real life one in that the entire focus is on the ground and in your ability to handle the kart. I like that. It can be a bit boring I guess, but it does change up the pace which is important to keep things fresh and test your skills at managing and maintaining speed without the benefit of turbo pads. But that doesn't mean you can't cut a few corners if you're a pro player. It's a shame that it lacks original music, stealing the tune from Tiny Arena, that was then repurposed again for Turbo Track, but I'm glad to see that Beanox put in the attention to detail and elevated this from a little kiddies go-kart track into a fully realised stadium race course. Beanox also graced us with Gingerbread Joyride for the Christmas Grand Prix event. <sighs> See, the problem with this one is that everything is just out of whack. On the surface, layout-wise, this is actually quite a technical course that suits highly trained players the most, which if you ask me, fails to fit the feel of a Christmas stage. It should be more basic and inviting, not so gruelling that it turns you into a Grinch. Specifically, the shortcut here. It's crucial to hit if you want to win, but it's such a complex trick to pull off. Then if you manage it, you're fed directly into an S-Bend which, in my experience, experience kills all of my momentum. Now, I don't claim to be a pro MLG player or anything like that, but I am a veteran of CTR and I just can't get behind this one. The Christmas theme, as tired as it is 11 months out of the year, is at its most insufferable during December when you can't escape the shit, so who really wants to be playing this? Which is unfortunate, as everything else here, I don't really have any complaints. Those gummy blocks before the finish line can die in a fire, but otherwise, I just wish this joyride was through any other level theme, to be totally honest. For number 52, we've got Wacky Volcano. It's such a lame name, but the map itself gets the job done as a decent, consistent level. There aren't really any issues here that I can find, though I do find it odd how some of the floor is covered in lava that doesn't actually hurt you. Yeah, what's that about? But with the addition of some caves full of fun drifting bends and exterior jumps through a giant dinosaur skeleton, it all fits perfectly fine. There isn't much more I can say on this one, honestly. There's nothing exactly memorable, but it's still a very solid level that fills in space quite nicely. Now it's time for one of the most polarizing levels of this entire ranking. Dragon Mines. Home to the Komodo Brothers and a literal dragon, this cave system is rad to turbo through. Down the shaft, by the water, and the carnage of minecarts is all perfection. If it weren't for that damn helix turn, it ruins this map's chances of going up any higher. But I don't understand. Why didn't they make it just the teeniest, tiniest bit wider so that it could be drifted with ease? Naughty dog. You're in the fucking doghouse for that decision, and Beanox are no better for not correcting this in the remake. 
I think I played this track maybe twice in all of my online play during the game's lifespan because nobody wanted a bar of it and I don't blame them. It's conflicting because literally everything else here is so cool. The environment design, the awesome tunes and the rest of the layout is so much fun to play. I was never a fan of the train track shortcut because it always seemed more of a hindrance for me personally. But yeah, I'm really disappointed that I couldn't have placed this one higher, all because of one single yet monumental error. We're getting through this ranking pretty efficiently people, we're almost halfway through. Placing at 50, we've got Meteor Gorge, a basic yet fundamentally sound track with a few big jumps, sharp hairpins for drifting, and a bouncy soundtrack. The original is a lot more of a generic snow course, while Nitro Fueled cut through the landscape a lot better, giving it a more industrial feel. It's crazy how a muddy track and the darker tones in the surrounding machinery is all you really need to enhance an otherwise mediocre course. There isn't much else to be said about this one other than it's another prime example of why not every course needs to be overcomplicated or technical to offer some enjoyable racing action. Some of you may be surprised to see this game still going. Well, let me tell you, it's still going strong. Mayan Mayhem is a strong average to build from, suiting Crash's themes very well. I could easily see Papu Papu or maybe even Aku Aku taking ownership over this place. The large temple structures perched atop the mountainous terrain look great, though the shortcut is poorly placed, I'll admit that. I do like this overall though and it fits perfectly in the series, even including those Venus flytraps. <laughs> Love to see it. It's a shame that some sections are so wide and spread everything out a little too much, but this one still ticks a lot of fundamental boxes. Crash Test Dummies from Tag Team handles the Egyptian theme much better than we saw in Dead Heat way back at number 76. Going for more of a Tomb Raider vibe, snaking through the drifting turns that actually fit well despite this game's racing mechanics, mummies all over and the large dude trying to whack you as you drive past are all a great fit and make this a memorable track. The shortcut is in a difficult spot though and doesn't actually offer much, if any, advantage whatsoever, like most of them in this game, but it doesn't hold this one back too much. I'm always more than happy to race through as it offers up a solid example of how fun tracks should be constructed. Now we're at the level that started it all. From CTR's introduction to adventure mode, we have Crash Cove. The definition of a starter map there is no denying, and let's be real, I'm sure we're all a little sick of it by now, but its impact cannot be argued, and for such a generic layout and theme, it does a solid job of offering up fun obstacles to navigate, such as the pirate ship jump, and using the bump in this lake to launch yourself up over the sand dunes. Exploring this ship was so intriguing when we were younger, and the happy and relaxed feeling this place offers always mellows me out with a big smile on my face. This one is the standard, the average we've come to expect that so many knockoffs have already been graded against and failed. Simply executed to absolute perfection. Thunderstruck really stands out, so much so that it can even be seen off in the background in the out of time level which is from the same hub world. The entrance is at the top of this anti-gravity wall which really sets it apart. The dark gothic figures on this clock tower above the canyons is a great visual and that huge loop in the centre is the perfect set piece. However, this version of the track is flawed. I can't ignore it any longer. The blinding rain and fog is a toxic yellow that taints the entire map. Thankfully, when Nitro Fueled came along, they drastically cleaned up the visuals while still maintaining the original atmosphere of a cold, rainy day in the desert. But now, without any anti-gravity, Beanox were forced to redesign the layout. Now, at first, I wasn't a big fan of losing the giant loop, as it was the key 
set piece in my opinion, replacing it with some snaking corners littered with obstructions wasn't a suitable alternative, but really, we didn't lose much, and in time, I will admit that it's grown on me quite a lot for not trying too hard to overcomplicate the layout. And on top of that, ditching the unnecessary and forced upside-down segment in exchange for a large half-pipe ramp works so much better for maintaining speed. So this is an example where the remake offered a positive change and stands out from the original. It can still feel a bit messy to play at times, but overall, this is a strong contender at this point in the rankings. Now, I had originally placed Cactus Capers much lower as the Wild Western theme was quite generic and didn't really fit with Crash. If you want to know more, just look towards Wrath of Cortex, it feels out of place there as well. But upon further reflection, there are some good merits found here. The ghost town interiors and exteriors are fun to race through, especially getting up onto balconies or drifting through the streets. Some of the canyons are a bit drawn out without a whole lot to offer, but then the gold mine reminds me of Wario's gold mine in Mario Kart, which is a good thing. It offered the perfect environment for a racing game with splits in the track and daredevil corner cutting so you don't fall off of the edge. It may be somewhat generic and a cliche for racing levels, but I feel like playing Cactus Capers first hand proves why it deserves a solid spot on this list. Back to Nitro Fueled now, and the final course that was added to it, Drive Through Danger. While I don't really gel with the fast food theme, it's got banger visuals and a heavy song to match, and as a technical course, it certainly does challenge the player, but it went overboard. This one is just too complex to be scored any higher, I'm sorry. For those of you who can nail this one perfectly, then good for you, but I find that the purposefully installed fuck you moments present here are a big detractor. The opening section is fire with tough corners and a large jump that hides the shortcut down below, but the brutal set of hairpins that immediately follow destroy any flow the course has and are ultimately pointless when you can just skip that entire segment. Then why even include this? The artificial jump in difficulty really wasn't needed and makes this uninviting for casual players which, love it or hate it, will always be the core player base for party spin-offs like this. If you're able to maintain your speed through all of that, then jumping off of the ledge of the final spiral is a neat shortcut, but yeah, for as stoked on this one as I was when it first released, it really doesn't hold up next to a lot of other courses. And with that, we are officially halfway through the rankings. Oh boy, I hope you're having as much fun as I am. This is a video I've been wanting to make for so long now, and we've got some true classics coming up very shortly. But while we're having this quick intermission, now would be a great time to stand up and have a nice big stretch especially if you're watching this video in a single sitting. Now would also be a great time to pause the video and go refill your snacks and use the bathroom. And if you haven't already, then consider hitting that like button, subscribing and sharing this video if you're enjoying it, because that really goes such a long way in helping me out. These every level ranked videos are a lot of work and we've still got a lot of work to go. So let's keep racing on with number 42. Barren Ruins, one of the more sleeper hits of Nitro Kart. Yeah, at first glance, I don't think many would have expected to see this one in the upper half of the rankings, but this is honestly a super solid course. Showing Dragon Mines how to do the upward spiral well, the ice physics and jumps adding to the chaos. I love the half pipe set piece with the boulder and riding up on the sides is like a discount sewer speedway. The back section is a little less involved, but I can appreciate that the implementation of such a simple shortcut can really enhance the final moments of a race, in many cases for shocking outcomes if a competitor fails to make that jump. Another underrated classic is Jungle Boogie. 
Given the sluggish handling of the original CNK, this one could possibly fall under the radar of many, but the remake really showcased the potential for this map. Speeding through fast turns, plenty of drifting, and a nice natural theme. Krunk's home course doesn't have a whole lot to see, but it is nice that while the two brief shortcuts are often determining factors in many races' victories, you're not always left in the dust by sticking to the lower paths. Given the figure eight design, it bears a striking resemblance to Ruse Tubes given that it also has plenty of large drifting turns and jumps for a boost when you land. But Rue has the superior theme in my opinion, showing other courses how to do an underwater level right with stunning displays of deep aquatic life passing through various cave formations. There is slightly less variation in the actual terrain here, but the shortcut at the end is an absolute game changer that elevates this beyond baby's first kart racer to a level much more enjoyable for advanced players as well. The abundance of awesome casual tracks in this franchise is just so dope, with Blizzard Bluff being another strong contender. My parents used to take me to a place called Blizzard's Landing, but we always called it Blizzard Bluff because I was always playing CTR. Granted, I wasn't super hot on this one when I was younger, but it has definitely grown on me over the years, thanks to its large drops, scenic views, and momentum on the ice. The only detractor would be some of the shortcuts being a bit awkward. I've been playing this shit most of my life, and I can only nail them half of the time. I do love the river launch, though. I'm not sure if that was a little broken in Nitro Fueled, or if that's just me, but I would absolutely take this one over a Mario Kart snow level any day of the week. Back to more tag team now with Track and the Beanstalk, one of the premier levels of this game. In fact, all three from the Happily Ever Faster world showcase positives from this otherwise mediocre racer. Climbing the vines up into the clouds to meet the giant, <laughs> it's so stupid and has nothing to do with Crash whatsoever, but it's just dumb fun. The theme park accents actually fit this one perfectly, and following the rainbow to a pot of gold leads into a gorgeous canopy, then back out into more of this fairy tale fuckfest. I say that as endearingly as possible, by the way. The music on this one unfortunately showcases the more annoying side of Spiral Mouth's a cappella tunes, but I guess it still works with the theme here. This one is alright, but there is still a few more that can top it. E-Velocity is a stark contrast and a nice step up in quality. The real winner here is just the theme. It gives me Mount Grimly vibes from Crash Mind Over Mutant actually, which came afterwards. The dark crypt locale with a booming thunderous yet still very creepy soundtrack featuring all manner of twisted artifacts on the course. From giant hands that crush you and magic mirrors, so much of the track is littered with gnarly brambles, and had we seen it feature in another game, all of those corners would have offered decent challenge to turbocharge through. So knowing that a course like this works, no matter what game it may have appeared in, earns it extra points. Now, this one has been of heavy debate within my handsome team of helpers for this video meaning that my partner and I have argued about this one back and forth. They think it's awful, but nah mate, you're absolutely wrong. Pyramid Pass has a great layout with yet another epic spiral to drift down, and launching up off of the pyramid into the desert is a prime set piece if you ask me. Passing through this ship into one too many hairpin turns does hurt the course, and due to Tag Team's general lack of environmental hazards, the desert sections feel a little empty, I'll admit that. But come on, it's got a shortcut behind the waterfall, and my only other minor complaint is that it lacks Egyptian theming when inside of the tomb area. It needs more crash test dummies kind of stuff happening. But all of these fundamentals have built a stable foundation for our next entry into the list. Twilight Tour had the unfortunate task of introducing players to the monthly Grand Prix events in Nitro Fueled, which in their infancy were a bit of a mess. 
Okay, I won't lie, they never got much better after that, but still, by the end of the first event, we were all sick of playing this map, weren't we? It's such a shame though, because it was actually handled very well in retrospect and feels like an evolution on the previous level. The wide desert now has some fun turns and dunes to hop over, leading into one of the most iconic symbols of the original trilogy. With CTR focusing more on courses based around staple characters and Nitro Kart taking us to new planets, Warp's worldly themes and time travel missed out for the longest time. So seeing those desert marketplaces fully realised in this format is such a treat. Transitioning from daytime and night was an odd decision, kind of quirky, but it has grown on me with time. And just the eccentric level of details in certain areas, this is both a stunning course to play and feel through the controller, taking in all of the landscape with a perfect tune to match it. Yes, Nitro Kart 2 is still in the race as we enter the upper echelon of this great series. Goofy Galaxy is far from goofy, with spaceship interiors opening up onto the surface of a moon or an unknown planet. This is what I'd consider a full realisation of Oxide's world that we saw back in the bottom 10 at number 77. If I have one major complaint, it's the heavy reliance on greys in the colour scheme for both the scientific lab areas and the rocky surfaces all over. But layout wise, the vast canyon passes and leaps across dislocated chunks of earth are a lot of fun to traverse and for a longer map, it doesn't drag on at any point, remaining fun and kind of chill the entire time with some calming sci-fi vibes in the music. It's so floaty and vibrant. Vibrant, just sweetness for my ears, proving that despite its lacklustre reception, this underdog has all of the potential to go the distance in these rankings. One of the brightest and the best for tag team, La Brea Car Pits is one of the few exceptions that actually feel like you're racing through a real location, as opposed to the tired theme park aesthetic this game bizarrely opted for. This great volcano has jumps and some startling bends to drift, met with a loud, intimidating sound. The huge molten rocks crashing to the ground are a great highlight, but the water spurts that launch you up are such a dire hindrance right before the finish line. I can't recall just how many races I've lost because of these bastards. The AI pathing can actually be a detractor here at times, speaking from experience, though when I returned to capture footage for this video, I didn't notice any glaring issues. Despite that, a whopper tag course, as this game is almost out of fuel. The final level we have to showcase for Tag Team Racing is Once Upon a Tire. Another whimsical dreamland affair, grab your best ball gown and tiara for this treacherous castle showdown. It's a simple one, but the drifts are long and the interior halls offer plenty of memorable moments with lots of room to manoeuvre amongst the other races. Ending off with a huge launch over the lake, it's another that despite its out of place theme within the rest of Crash's history, it would have worked in any of the racing titles. I mean, just look at Coco Park, that's all cute and colourful as well. So this one is an oddly charming gem. It was a decent effort from Tag Team during these rankings, but it was ultimately let down by its lack of actual kart racing. Placing so much preference on the gunning gameplay really hurt so many of these levels, which all showed great potential had they been handled better. But that's not to say that it was all for nothing, as their influence surely inspired greater things to come. While we say goodbye to one game, a round of applause for another still hanging in there so late despite the expectations of many. 
One of Nitro Kart 2's later courses, Crazy in Kartmandu, is a mountainous track along a great vista in the Nepalese landscape along cliffside edges of sheer drops, rope bridges and through a little town perched up high above the clouds. I will admit that I'm cutting this one a bit of slack given that the gameplay in this is far more basic than the other races still in competition, but I'm only doing that because I feel that with a few minor thematic adjustments to help it fit within Crash's universe, this one could have been an absolute classic. Yes, I am dead serious. Not only does the simple yet fun layout offer a variety of iconic locations that help it stand out, but it also includes an obstacle that only a very small handful of levels have ever attempted in the series. That is, featuring a crossover point where races pass each other. I love arcade races where they do this as it offers a lot of potential for last minute attacks that are integral to the outcome of a race. See someone up ahead? Well, just time the perfect hit to give yourself a fighting chance, or if you're in the lead, then make sure you stay on top of the podium by dropping an item. I was so hoping we'd see some of this introduced in Nitro Fueled with the new courses, and it never happened. What a shame. So while I am being a little lenient on this one, I just wanted to showcase its outside the box thinking when it comes to adding flair to a race course, elevating it from just average up to something a lot more memorable. Time to dive into more deep sea driving. The Ruse Tube's influence is unmistakable, but I'd argue Deep Sea is superior thanks to being a slightly more involved course featuring additional cave sections and larger tunnels through the watery depths. The splits in the path and hazards also bring this up a notch adding some difficulty, sometimes at an annoying level right at the end of an excellent lap, but nonetheless, I always love seeing themes evolve over time. Removing the anti-gravity in Nitro Fueled really helped to increase the pace as you launch above a giant octopus creature, and rather than that awkward loop at the end, this upward spiral fits a lot better, though it seems that the hazards are even tougher to avoid in my experience, but my god, when you get that perfect stroke of luck and nail it flawlessly, your opponents learn what it's like to race against God himself. The intense speeds you can reach on this one make it a total blast, screaming through the cavernous terrain for an absolute belter as we move on to another Nitro Kart original at number 28. Tiny Temple Oh boy, this one is very pretty. Such bold night colours as we race through the Terra jungles and ruins. It's always been odd to me why there is a temple dedicated to Tiny Tiger on this strange planet. I mean, it does make sense once you complete the story as Team Cortex, but we only just started the adventure, so it's just, it's a little strange. Regardless, the fire totems in the split on this track are a bastard hazard, but I always love the detail of what appeared to be Oxide spaceship crash landed here, introducing a modern, technological intruder overthrown by the influence of the native landscape. And of course, we need to discuss the twisting corkscrew at the end. Unfortunately, the anti-gravity in CNK really lets this down, making it a slow, plodding affair, but as a feature, it still looks really cool and makes it stand out from many other levels in the franchise, but it's not exactly original. CTR's Tiger Temple, while much grittier in its presentation, still features a course surrounded by stone ruins that lead us through an interior with those fire-breathing idols. Still, Tiger Temple, despite being a lot more straightforward, does it a lot better in my opinion, offering one of the most unique shortcuts of all of the racing games. Its position is obviously marked on the map, but actually learning how to open it up by using a weapon is a discovery that stunned many of us in our formative years, I'm sure. That is incredible. I'm actually kind of shocked that this wasn't ripped off in all of the sequels. In fact, unless I'm mistaken, this is the only level out of 84 levels to actually do this. Incredible. 
the large corners and jumps make for prime drifting and boosting opportunities. However, the nitro-fueled remaster of Tiny Temple has got it beaten. That's right, retaining all of the stunning visuals, that fast-paced, upbeat soundtrack and a whopper course design, the biggest improvement here is removing that slow corkscrew in exchange for a much more diverse split in the path, which now offers a more difficult yet rewarding alternate route. And with this game's ultimate sacred fire, or as it's better known, the blue flame, hitting such ridiculous speeds and maintaining them in blistering, eye-watering laps over and over, this is without a doubt an absolute winner and a prime example of why this game is so damn fun. Another nitro fueled remaster is Out of Time. Now this is an example where I'd like to argue that the original version of the map is actually superior. In fact, I believe this is the only example of this in the entire rankings. It was a tough call given that they're so, so similar, but I have decided to split these two versions into separate positions based on the fact that the clock, which was the primary feature of the original, was drastically downgraded in the newer revision. It's still there, just as a quick interior hairpin, but it doesn't feel nearly as special or unique. Those little sandworms have also been removed for some fuck all reason. They were one of the key parts of this map. They were even on the loading image for the original, so why were they removed? It makes this section feel uncharacteristically empty. In regards to everything else though, it's still very good, but that's because the original provided such a well-crafted template. The time-twisted desert environment was great, especially as a home track for the norms with all of their crazy antics. The large turns were a pain, but the hidden in plain sight shortcut was a very clever addition, which forced players to really inspect their environment. Moving up to the giant clock, what an iconic visual. Of all the anti-gravity segments in this game, yeah, it's just as needless as the rest, but it's also one of the least clunky to navigate and doesn't outstay its welcome. With a bouncy tune, awesome hairpins to drift through, accentuated with plenty of architectural landmarks, Out of Time stands proud, leading us nicely into the most crucial part of these rankings as we move into the top tier content. Nitro Kart's finale against Emperor Velo on a course of his own diabolical design is one of the grandest endings to a game I've ever seen. The Colosseum sitting atop the head of this asteroid, seeing this entire thing open up to reveal a brand new track that we've never seen before, my god, it's a mess in the best possible way. Split across various locations and featuring the largest leaps of faith, winding corners and gruelling obstacles that all lead out to this huge anti-gravitational pipe system floating in space, what a fucking monstrous track. I love this shit. Due to the original game's heavier controls, the huge shortcut in the middle portion is a lot harder to pull off in this version, and when it was remade for Nitro Fueled, this level saw one of the most dramatic transformations in the entire series. While personally, I prefer the original, as it's a lot longer with this section through the core of the planet, which reminds me of that scene in Disney's Treasure Planet, objectively speaking, it doesn't add a whole lot, and the new alternative, while while maybe not as epic in scope, still delivers with the threatening atmosphere and thankfully, a much more streamlined and sleek playstyle. This version really has a much greater emphasis on speed and skill, which needs to be rewarded. But no matter how you look at it, Hyperspaceway really stands tall as one of the greatest in the franchise without question. Still kicking, we've got another gem in Bayou Blowout. For a more middle of the game level, it sure does reek of personality and offers such a fun design, I could honestly play this one for hours. Lots of turns and fun straightaways into a constantly evolving landscape of murky mud holes, through shack interiors, over bridges and tree branches along the riverbank where stilted homes sit in the background. What's not to love about this? 
this, and with the inclusion of a redneck rockabilly soundtrack, it slaps hard. I honestly can't believe it. Just looking at gameplay of this, it might be hard to believe for yourself, but I've played this firsthand, so trust me when I say, it's so worthy of appearing this high up, beating out many of our longtime favourites. It's a shame that Crash 4 didn't see the addition of any new courses being added to Nitro Fueled, as this would have been recycled perfectly into a Dingo Diner themed track. A man can dream though, a man can dream. But with that, we have reached the top 20, the upper echelon of Crash Team Racing levels, and I've got to warn you, trying to critique and analyse each of these instant classics coming up is going to be incredibly difficult, so if you wouldn't mind helping me out here, please tell me what is your favourite level and why, and what's a level that you think is somewhat underrated? Please let me know with a comment down below on this video as we continue on with these rankings. Now, we've still got four games in the running for that grand prize, but unfortunately, we have to say goodbye to one of them right now. The final level featured from Nitro Kart 2 is Haunted Hovel, a seemingly generic spooky stage, but thanks to the influence of the Academy of Evil, this does easily fit within the Crash universe. Starting off out in the woods and climbing up to an interior section, we get a good mix of harsh right angle turns and the more natural curves outside. And again, while it's more spread out this time, there is another level crossing point in the track, like that one I was raving about about in Kartmandu earlier. I just love to see this. It's just a really strong course in my opinion, one totally wasted appearing in this game, but it thankfully left an impact by inspiring a new course that we'll see very shortly. As for Nitro Kart 2 as a whole, I know it's kind of a laughing stock within the franchise's history, but please. It may not have been perfect, but it did bring a lot of content ranging from decent to incredible to Crash's racing legacy. But with this game eliminated, that only leaves Crash Team Racing, Nitro Kart, and Nitro Fuel. So while the remaining 19 levels all appear within the remake, seemingly making this a clear winner of this ranking, please be reminded, the only way that this game can claim victory is if one of its original and exclusive courses can take that top spot on the podium. Original levels such as Nina's Nightmare. This Halloween addition to the game's roster of levels was definitely a fun time. Past the meadows, under bramble-coated archways, and eventually leading up to another spooky structure, which really does seem oddly familiar. I love that I'm able to showcase these standard, less complex levels so high up in the rankings because they are the meat of racing games. They're crucial, and I think a lot of people, especially veteran players, expected to see large and epic, overly clusterfucked courses being added into the game. But this one is just a mid-game workhorse carrying the entire experience on its back, like so many of our other fan favourites. The only complaint that I do have is the wobbly foundation inside of the building really takes some skill to navigate efficiently. Man, I hope you got a refund on that one Miss Amberley, this is terrible. Also, bonus points for the possessed pumpkin that can be triggered to attack different sides of the split pathway. The interactive stuff is an element that went heavily underutilised in so many cases. And another simple shortcut akin to Out of Time is fun, but the other shortcut is so hidden that I'm sure most players don't even realise it's even there. And if you're like me, you don't care to use it because holy fuck, that's some ninja shit if you can execute that stunt. Sticking with more of these incredible overperformers, we've got Mystery Caves in at number 18. What can I say about this one you don't already know? It's utterly fantastic. It's got some great turns and set pieces, the music is bouncy, and so is the track at times. But just look at how stunning this is. Images that scare Mario Kart fans of this era. Just look at the level of detail that just brings this open lava section to life. 
What a fucking iconic landmark. And this one, thankfully, still stands the test of time 20 years later in the remake, which went into overdrive with even more awesome details, such as glowing, contrasting lighting between the cooler caves coated in foliage and the inferno deep underground. Simply executed to pure perfection, people. How can you argue with that? Papu's Pyramid is up next, and there is a clear reason why this course was selected for Nitro Fueled's cover artwork. It's instantly recognisable landmarks, great fun, yet challenging design, and the amount of variety there is to explore here is off the charts. Featuring some of the absolute toughest turns in the franchise with that temple climb, if you can nail it every single lap, then you deserve a medal. The piranha plants are also a great addition, especially that one bastard tucked away right at the back of a huge drifting hairpin right before an epic launch towards the finish line. There is so much creativity with how the player can make it through and learning to cut corners is essential to mastery. Up over the grass section, the big leap over the pillar past waterfalls and in the final moments of a race, making it across this enormous gap can be a game changer for the outcome. And even though it's not nearly as relevant to racing a fast lap on this level, I think riding up along the ledge of this giant structure really conveys the scope and authenticity of this track, adding an extra layer of depth to item placement when you can drop objects on the level ahead of any racers currently in first position. There is nothing else like it. This being the only crossover segment similar to those in Nitro Kart 2 that even featured in the mainline racing titles, god damn, Papu you big beautiful lumpy boy, how is it even possible to have so many more levels better than this one? Tiny Arena is one that I feel many others have placed lower in their personal rankings, but in my experience at least, this one for me is the purest form of a kart racing challenge. With so many tight corners to navigate, mastery of the power slide is essential for completion, making this a grittier slide coliseum. But there are still plenty of ramps and straightaways for weapon mayhem and big airs for boosts. Clearly a blatant rip-off of Wario Stadium in 64, even going as far to stealing many of the layout ideas with a large crossover before the finish line, whatever. CTR's additional mud pits fit perfectly and build in some environmental hazards elevating this course. I may be a little biased, admittedly. I used to play seven laps on this as a kid over and over until I got a cramp in my hand. But this one proves why technical courses based on a player's skill at the game don't always need to evolve around the more flashy set pieces. This one is all about pure ability and Naughty Dog's ability to achieve that so well is why Crash is often considered as much of a kart racing franchise as he is a platform forming mascot. Ah, here we go, another gem from Nitro Fuel. While many of us were ultimately left a little unsatisfied with Spyro's short-lived crossover in this game, the one course we did get was absolutely stellar taking us on an adventure from Artisan Plains through the dragon libraries of Dark Hollow and then out into the high caves of Wizard's Peak and the Magic Crafter's homeworld, it's a stunning representation of what we love about the original game. And certainly as a selling point for Reignited too, for anybody who'd slept on that the prior year. Another track all about your skill as a racer, with next to no shortcuts or cheating crutches to lean on, you'll have to rely on some strong drifts and luck of the draw with item crates. But just seeing some of these enemies turned into such clever hazards that feel like they truly interact with the map is so awesome. Gems are scattered everywhere and oh my god, a musical tribute so perfectly executed, I'm just going to let it play for a bit.
if you're not hot on this track, then stop dragging your feet, because this one is fire. And if you need more Spyro in your life, go check out my every level ranked of the Spyro franchise I completed last year. It's a whopper though, at almost three hours long, so good luck with that. You've been warned. <laughs> Coming to you from the world of Techni is Android Alley. This was without question my favourite level in this game as a kid. The train cutting through the centre of the starting tunnel is burned into my retina. The futuristic city snakes up and around various anti-gravity pathways and ultimately spirals back down with that excellent shortcut through the glass window, which isn't totally obvious at first glance. I just love when these games encourage trial and error, which often leads to the cool discoveries. I've seen very few complaints for this one yet again. However, much like many Nitro Kart levels, removing and simplifying by taking away those anti-gravity segments really does so much for a level's potential. I'll admit that I was a bit salty about this decision when the game first released, as the twisted layout on this one was a huge selling point for me. But the remake is just so much more efficient to play, still keeping all of the other awesome set pieces, while not feeling like it's trying too hard to be more than is really necessary. If I ever needed to prove how pointless those anti-gravity segments were in the original game, then this is it. Still an immensely enjoyable track without them. They may have inspired inventive layouts, but they were all ultimately such a large hindrance, and I'm glad to be rid of them. And visually, the appearance of everything is so much cleaner as well. I'm sure our boy Geary greatly appreciates that. Are you all shocked on how much Beanox's contributions have influenced this entire ranking? They really did such a tremendous job on that game, despite the heavy constraints placed on them. Before this, I'd honestly never even heard of the studio before, so what an incredible first impression. Another CNK classic is Electron Avenue. I love that loading screen. This is me anticipating your comments regarding how wrong I am about this entire video. Starting off with that gigantic dive down into the depths and then having to climb your way back up to the top of this spaghetti disaster is an incredible feeling. Swapping out those turbo tracks in the subway area, unfortunately, they lead into a somewhat sloppy anti-gravity section. It always kills the pace with its shoddy construction. Thankfully, everything else is epic with leaps over electrified barriers, some improved anti-gravity, and some brutal turns towards the finish line. For such a late game course, it meets the requirement with an endurance test through a blisteringly colourful city of the future, large shuttles flying around and a heavy, fast-paced tune to get your heart pumping nice and strong. This one is incredible, hence why it was such a large feature in the remake. Opting for the neon vaporwave aesthetic, the course visually has been entirely reborn, and thanks to much better handling in the new areas that replace anti-gravity, now we shoot out of the turbo tunnel into a series of sharp turns that lead towards another turbo tunnel perfect for fucking up other players. It gets so intense racing this, and it's a requirement to cut every corner possible, if you can handle it. Then with some more brutal turns, we launch into the hardest corner of the entire game. But when you nail this just right, it is pure bliss. This level tests everyone brave enough to enter, and winning on Electron Avenue is no easy feat. So while it may have just missed out on a top 10 position, congratulations for giving us the ultimate challenge of mastery. But yes, we have officially reached the top 10. Man, I hope you've all enjoyed this as much as I've enjoyed ranking some of my absolute favourite levels. Not just from this series or any kart racing series, but out of all the games I've played in my life, there are so many of my absolute favourites here. <sighs> 
you know, I, I, I've been really keen on this video for so long. I was actually hoping that I'd be making this as a celebration for hitting 50,000 subscribers on the channel, but unfortunately, I don't think we're going to be quite there by the time this video is uploaded. But that's totally okay, because I couldn't wait any longer to make this. You know, it's just been boiling up inside me for years now, so screw it. Here it is. But, if you are a new viewer and you've enjoyed the video, then maybe now is the perfect time to subscribe and make sure you hit that bell to be notified about my future uploads. Alright, alright guys, enough of that pandering shit. It's time we kick this bastard into overdrive with number 10. <music> Assembly Lane. Yes, knocking out all three Technic horses in a row here. The love child of Tiny Arena and Engine Labs is such a quality track with a healthy dose of both curved and hard right turns, which is always a great combo. It's got some simple, quick shortcuts that have such a large impact on the outcome, as well as that huge magnet, probably my personal favourite item to interact with. <laughs> I'm always just such a bastard. The triumphant yet heavy mechanical music also does a lot to influence the mood present here. And while the simplest of Technies levels, it still feels like a late game stage when it's all put together. Now both the original and remade versions are being grouped in together here because the removal of anti-gravity really had no impact on this one. The additional brief shortcut was welcome, but aside from that, these are so similar, I don't think we need to have that discussion. While we've still got three games competing for that top prize, Nitro Kart only has one more remaining course. Do you think it can go the distance? Alright, I know you guys have been here for a long time, your attention is being tested, and if your head is up in the clouds a bit, well, then you must be thinking about Hot Air Skyway. The setting here is incredible, a giant slalom of twisting turns spiralling into jumps suspended up in the air by giant airships inherited by everyone's underutilised favourite, Pinstripe Potteroo. With his bombs, he can be a right bastard to race on this one, but the level itself is so intoxicating to master. The addition of Blue Flame, even in the original game, lures you in to achieving near impossible speed which makes navigating the sharp turns without boundaries to keep you on the track such an enormous challenge to overcome. But when you can do it, oh boy. The additional casino features added in fit really well, I think, and as for that shortcut at the end, I just said earlier that Electron Avenue had the hardest corner. Well, this one might have it beaten. It's tough just sticking to the ground, but to leap up and over, taking advantage of this is a benefit to only the most elite racers in the galaxy. Which is definitely not me. I can never do this one consistently. The trumpets in the soundtrack also bop out a perfectly appropriate tune that always make this a race to remember. Now, this one is a fan favourite for sure. Sewer Speedway is one of the all-time greats, bringing the toxic tunnels of both Crash 1 and 2 to life on the track, with giant drums rolling around, strong colours, even the metallic sound of your cart reverberating, bouncing and echoing off the walls is such an incredible level of detail. The music fits perfectly too, and launching up and out of those half pipes is so fun, why wasn't Tony Tony Hawk in this game, he'd fit in perfectly. Launching through this shortcut is also well done too, with the option of continuing through to find additional power-ups, or immediately jumping back down to maintain your position in the lead. And with split pathways in the intro, there are just so many different ways to scream through these corridors. The only problem keeping this one from going any higher is that sometimes the physics on these ramps can be a little janky, mostly in the remake. They got me properly screaming in 
in frustration, but it's such a minor problem. Nothing can disrupt the reputation of Sewer Speedway as a true work of art in the genre. Oxide Station is next up, and this might come as a shock to some of you who rightfully consider this a contender to take the top prize. Still, ending the race at 7th place is a victory to be respected. Well, not in CTR, because there are only 8 races on the track, but out of 84 levels on this list, it holds up incredibly well. Sneaking down through this intergalactic catastrophe is such a blast, it's no wonder so many others tried to emulate it over the years, but there is just no topping the original. The huge moon jumps through the exterior sections are so damn fun. Sometimes, I actually opt to loop back to do them a second time within a single lap just to be an idiot, which lands me at the back of the pack. Then, to inflate my own ego, I guess, hitting this super shortcut to put myself back in first place and eliminate any chance of competition is such a blast. The sheer volume of speed at your fingertips is off the walls. Speed, speed, speed so, so much, much speed. speed! My only complaint, and the one reason this didn't score any higher, even though it's still excellent, is that the third act after you complete that large jump back inside, sneaking through until the finish line, feels a bit slapped together in my opinion. Now I'd take a wild guess and assume that this is the result of this map being drastically shortened from its original version. Yeah, I was shocked to learn about this, but supposedly Oxide Station was supposed to be so much more involved, featuring a four-way split in the path, but was ultimately stripped back due to console limitations. And that's probably for the best. This one is a premier example of why this game has such a strong, hardcore and casual fan base all these years later. This track is so supreme that the PS1 can barely handle it for Christ's sake. That's how you know this one is an absolute king of kart races. In at number 6, we've got Mega Mix Mania. What a bad fucking ass track, guys. Rust Land was a great event, introducing some of the best items into this game, and this. This beast of a course. Dusty, post-apocalyptic canyons and plains, littered with industrial activity and mechanical waste. Everything is covered in graffiti, and the huge interior of Engine's old battleship from Twin Sanity provided tight challenge that compromised even the best player's lead above others. And that music. It kicks so damn hard. Holy shit, guys, this is so dope. Even down to the much smaller details and mines scattered around that blast you with a colourful explosion, the difficult shortcut, and that huge leap into possibly the most complex area of the track inside of this gully. At first glance, it doesn't seem so hard, but there are so many different lines to take through here, all of them just as treacherous. Little did we know at the time that what we were witnessing here was a glimpse towards Crash's future with the fourth game set for release much later on in the year, which also included this industrial desert area. At this point in the game's lifespan, a new release of this quality was the last thing I expected to see following Gingerbread Joyride for Christmas prior. This one certainly was a shocking late entry, I'm so glad to see so late in these rankings.
Cortex Castle. Such an iconic level, how could it not appear in our top 5 today? These right angle turns gave players grief for years until we learned how to master the art of power sliding. Drawbridges offer excellent opportunities for boosts until one of those pesky spiders drop down and block your pathway. Great medieval visuals, dark colours and atmosphere accompanied with a great score that feels both elegant and adrenaline pumped. We all know this one is pure excellence, there isn't a whole lot I even need to say to sell it to you. But I find that it's often the smallest of details that can offer the most to a stunning track. Those stained glass windows are just exquisite, even better to appreciate Remade exploring a lot more of Cortex's vast list of personality traits. And that quick shortcut for a late race comeback into a huge jump never ceases to provide great moments we can all relate to. However, probably a little controversial, I feel that Clockwork Wampa did it just slightly better. Only ever so slightly though. See, despite really being a copy-paste job, clearly taking a lot of inspiration from Cortex Castle, this track just has more going on. We only really got spiders as the stage hazards before, which were fine and were perfectly executed, but here we've got various gears that block your path and squash you, we've got that large trap door that can be opened up to suck in unsuspecting races, and then there is the big pendulum at the end, perfectly placed to fuck you on your best lap right before the finish line. I love it. So this one feels a lot more involved and cartoony, which works for the arcade action. I still love both of these equally, and honestly, you can take your pick. At this point, they could swap spots and it wouldn't make a difference, but for Nitro Kart's final level to appear on this list, what a way to go out. Huge jumps, the really cool environmental shortcut across the spinning gears, and another great booming soundtrack. Thematically, given that this level appears in the desert homeworld known as Phenomena, the remake's decision to introduce snowy mountains in the background was quite a shock, but a pleasantly beautiful one. Overall though, incredible delivery on this, and as for Nitro Kart, it's appeared mostly in the upper half of the rankings, offering us some unforgettable experience. I'm sad to see it go, but we've only got three levels left. What are the chances that the remake runs away with the number one spot? Well, it's quite unlikely, because the final level exclusive to CTR Nitro Fueled is Prehistoric Playground. Oh dear, I feel like I'm gonna be alone on this one, because whenever I discuss this track with people, they absolutely hate it. How? This is a masterclass in kart racer level design. For starters, a fun new theme playing off of ones we've previously seen, paying homage to Warped in a similar way as Twilight Tour. Sure, we had some dinosaur stuff in Tag Team Racing, but that's still tributed here as well, with certain features handed down to this newer, realised approach. The water geysers from La Brea Car Pits are here, and the large jump out onto a rope bridge at the end is similar to Tire and Ice. The layout itself is another that favours both casual and pro players with some standard turns and others a little more complex. This large open area around the big dinosaur is great too, creating the perfect playground for some target practice and launching off of his tail for a boost. The outside jungle and interiors coated in such luscious colours and this cave offering us a crucial shortcut. Of course the other cheat being difficult to reach but so rewarding when you do, all topped off with a fast paced, perfectly curated song. How could you not love this track? I will never understand the people who hate this one. 
Speaking subjectively, because this was the peak of playing Nitro Fueled for me personally, but I can honestly say that objectively, this track not only ticks all of the boxes for what a great race level needs, it fucking smashes all of them. An incredible bronze award for Beanox and their sublime remake. It may have had several issues that went unpolished in its lifespan, along with a few other hiccups along the way, what game doesn't? But as far as the effort developers put in to bringing us a fresh experience with new adventures, it's insane how well they achieved their goals. But with that elimination, predictably, the original Crash Team Racing is the sole survivor with only two more levels to rank. Let's check them out. Just missing out on the top spot, we have an incredibly close second with Engine Labs. In all of my years, I've never heard a single complaint from anyone, because there is honestly just so much to adore about this technological mecha. Plenty of turbo pads, a super zoomy turbo tunnel, and those toxic drums are back, out for revenge after sewer speedway. Are you brave or quick enough to risk it? Because the reward is high. Despite its tight corners akin to Cortex Castle, we can actually cut a lot of them, creating such an organic flow through each area, and launching off for a big jump is always a show stealer. In particular, using the cheeky trick of jumping off to the side and using a different boost pad. It comes with great risk as there is sometimes items placed there designed to mess up other players, but hit this just right and your ultimate sacred fire will be bellowing out, leaving the others in smoke. There's also low-lying kickers for jumping off of and an exceptional soundtrack, as well as the remake introducing many more details, including the construction floor, where we can see engines' death bots from the trilogy being put together. There is absolutely no denying that this one is worthy of such a strong silver position, but that leaves us with only one more level to rank. Finally, we can see the checkered flag at the end of this race. Have you been paying attention? Do you know what it is? The number one best Crash Team Racing level is... Polar Park. Yes, that's right, another Crash Snow level dominating the high ranks. If you've seen my every level ranked on the platforming Crash levels, then you'll know that snow maps tended to favour quite highly. The Bandicoot just does snow so well, there is nothing else to it. The vibrant punch of joy that overrides your entire system when that green light flashes and you blast off over the hills is tough to describe. This course just has an infection sense of happiness and glee to it. Starting off with those twisting turns around the polar bear, already we've got a few different methods to approach this, and variety, as you may have realised by now, is key to great level design. Making your way over towards the large hairpin jumping between sheets of ice above the water, it's a chilling moment to say the least, all players understand. Not to mention if you've got the stones to pull off the shortcut, skipping this entire segment. It's hard, but not impossible, and you'll be greatly rewarded with a lengthy straightaway. It's great for hitting other players, but in first position, man, are you prone to attacks along here, creating such a nerve-wracking second act. Through the tunnel and past the seals is a bitch of a corner, but time your speed right and jump over the wall in one of the simplest, yet best executed shortcuts that we've seen today. This is followed up with some slippery ice making a return from Blizzard Bluff, which we saw way back at number 39. Now I praise that track, and it certainly deserves it, but man. The vast leap in quality between CTR's two original snow courses is just nuts. 
And finally, launching off of that huge iceberg to complete another lap, not only is this one flooded with memorable and fun obstacles to navigate, but the landscape feels so natural to race through and is only enhanced with greater detail in the remake, infusing so much more life into the background. It was a big job to rank all of these levels today, but now that it's all said and done, Polar and Polar Pass have definitely earned that golden trophy. The perfect award for a level of utter perfection. Whew, well, that's it, people. The Grand Champion has been crowned, the galaxy's fiercest races have been defeated, and Earth is saved once again. I had a lot of fun dissecting all of these levels for you in this video, and I really hope you all enjoyed watching. I'd like to throw out a quick thank you to all of my backers over on Patreon, as their support helps to keep me afloat and allows me to work on these bigger projects for the channel. And always, a special thanks to all of my friends and my amazing partner, who I'm always bouncing ideas off of, getting their opinions on stuff, and also for just being the best human beings for supporting me as much as they do. Cheers guys, I absolutely love all of you so much. Also, remember to use my promo code SQUARE to get a huge discount when you sign up with Surfshark's VPN service. And finally, if you haven't done so already, then make sure you like, subscribe and share the video with your friends and on social media. Because the continued viewership and support of everyone who watches my channel really means so much to me and inspires me on a daily basis. And for me personally, coming out of the toughest year of my entire life, man, I am so grateful to be able to say that I'm back to loving what I do. So thank you all so much for sticking by me. And until next time, I'm Square Eye Jack, and I hope you have a great fucking day. Thank you all so much for watching. <laughs>